Part 5. The Taxiway Tool If you've been following along from our previous videos, we find ourselves working on our brand new profile for London Heathrow Airport. We've defined an airport boundary. And we've added a runway in the form of 09 right, stroke 27 left. Now we'll move on to adding a taxiway. So simply select Taxiway from the tools on the left or press the T key on your keyboard to switch to taxiway mode. In this mode, we'll simply left click on the map to define taxiway nodes. On our first click, we'll be asked for the name of the taxiway. You can leave this blank for some unnamed taxiways or a value can be added here. Here we're defining taxiway alpha. So we'll simply enter a capital A into the box, then select OK. We're now in the path drawing mode for our new taxiway. A red dot appears with a gold outline to show us the starting node. And a green line follows our cursor to show the line the path will follow at our next click. So we'll continue to click placing nodes. It's best practice to add nodes at every point that the line branches, as well as on top of any hold points or stop bar markings. And don't worry if you miss one, we will cover how to split a taxiway shortly. A path will be considered complete once we left click on an existing taxi node, or simply right click to end the path where it already is. We then may begin a new path by left clicking again. If we click on an existing node to start a new path, any existing name associated with that will automatically be entered into the name box, or we can change it. In this case, we're defining November 1, 0. So we will enter N, 1, 0 into the box instead and select OK. And again, we continue placing nodes to complete our path. Now, if you wish to split a taxiway, we can hold down shift while using the taxiway tool. A new node will appear on any taxiway close to our mouse cursor and follows our cursor as we move it. So once we're happy with where that node will appear, continuing to hold down the shift key, we will left click. And there, the new node is created, splitting the taxiway. Now let's return to select mode. That's S on the keyboard and click on a node that we placed on a stop bar. In the property editor on the right, we can see some details and settings on this node. So we'll select type and switch this to runway entry exit, and then select update properties to apply it. The circular node has now updated instead to a double line to indicate it is a runway hold and a new option has appeared, hold short for runway. We'll select this drop down list and can choose from any runway in our current airport profile. For now, we've only got our one existing runway, 09 right, 27 left. Then we'll simply click Update Properties again to associate the hold point with the runway. Now let us click on a taxiway line itself while using the Select tool. In the properties on the right, we'll see a number of options. The name of the taxiway, the maximum wingspan of an aircraft allowed down this taxiway, the path type and the directionality. Let's explore the path types first. Selecting this option, we can see a total of 10 types of path. Each path type is drawn differently to make them visually distinct at a glance. The default is always taxiway and these are used by aircraft primarily, but can be used by ground vehicles if necessary. Next is simply path. These are similar to taxiways, but less formal. The pushback path is a special type used for controlling custom pushbacks at a gate. Pushback paths will only be used when requested, but will take priority over nearby taxiways if they are requested. We will demonstrate creating a pushback path in its own advanced concept video later. The parking type can honestly be ignored. It's there for compatibility with the Sobo data, but shouldn't be used in general practice. Vehicle type and road type are used to specify paths that other ground vehicles should attempt to use. 
They will prefer to use these where possible and only use the main taxiways when necessary. Aircraft will never be given a path along these. Painted line is another lesser form of taxiway. It's simply a single centre line with no formal edges or lighting. Closed indicates this was a former taxiway but should be considered unusable unless absolutely necessary to reach the requested spot. And finally, the type None is another Asobo compatibility type. It should typically not be used as it indicates a path that no vehicles will attempt to follow. And last but not least, let's examine the directionality option. Two-way means this path or taxiway may be used in either direction. Then one-way options will show the approximate cardinal direction the path will be allowed to flow in. In this case, northbound or southbound. These directions are automatic based on the direction of the path or taxiway selected. And as always, we select the Update Properties option to commit any changes made in the Property Editor and see the updates reflected in our map. Taxiways may be edited in bulk. While in Select Mode, we can hold down Control or Shift and left-click on multiple taxiways to select them. We can also hold down Shift and click Drag to enter Marquee Box Selection Mode to select multiple taxiway segments at once. Shift plus Alt plus click drag will allow us to deselect multiple taxiway segments at once. We also may see the Select All button in the Property Editor on the right. This will allow us to automatically expand our selected segments to include all segments sharing the same taxiway name. And any changes made here will be applied to all selected segments when the Apply Bulk Changes button is used. Join us in the next video as we cover parking points.